Okay, we are joined with the director and writer of the film, Rama Mosley. Congratulations on Lost Child. This is a huge night for you. This is a wonderful, wonderful film. Thank you. And we are so excited about the premiere tonight. Thank you. And I would like to ask you a million questions about this wonderful film. Yeah. Starting with, how did you know the script is ready and locked and ready to execute the project? Well, it happened also quickly, you know, it, essentially I had made my first film and I was waiting for the next one to happen and two years went by and I was so depressed and I was like driven by madness and I just decided I'm going to go and write a script. And I called up my writing partner, Tim Macy, whose family's from the Ozarks and I said, let's just write a script that we can make and I'll use my savings and we'll shoot it in your dad's house. And so we spent about a week bouncing stories back and forth and then we sat down and in four weeks we wrote the script. And I was then, I flew out to the Ozarks and we began prepping the movie. So it was like one of those stories in which it was like we were driven by madness, but we created something very special to us and very small. It's really, I think, the true version of indie spirit, indie filmmaking. It's like, I think the Indie Spirit Awards have become so crazy with like all these like big studio films. But really, like what we did, where we made it with a family of 12 people yeah. in the Ozarks, in people's homes, is really, truly independent filmmaking. And you shot this on location in Montana. You no, know, we we Sorry. shot so we shot this on location in the Ozarks. Okay, in the Ozarks, yes. which is in what state? Please tell me. Missouri, it's lower Missouri. parts of Missouri and upper part of Arkansas. Okay, because the cinematography was absolutely outstanding. It was gorgeous. The color combinations and just the variety of shots and everything about this film was very cinematic and also such a dramatic thriller. Yeah. Let's talk about the script and how did you keep the momentum going throughout the whole story uh, and the suspense and when did you know how to hit the suspenseful parts in the script and execute that through yeah. storytelling it? Well, you know, really my partner in making this was Darren Moran, who's an incredible cinematographer. And when we went into making this, I said, you know, I really see this as a Western, a modern day female Western. And Levin Rambin couldn't have been a better actress to choose. And between the two of them, between the cinematography and the acting, we were able to really focus in and create a pace and a tempo that, that really played to that tension and that mystery. Um, and it was an incredible experience because sometimes we would go in with a plan and the light would be so beautiful over in this other direction and we would go and end up shooting new scenes and developing new pieces. And my my focus was really on the most authentic performance, which I think is what brings tension, yes. is when the, the characters are feeling, you know, really are feeling what is happening yeah. and are have obstacles and objectives. And so, you know, between the cinematography and the acting, that was really, that was the focus. And she plays so well with young actor who plays Cecil. Landon Edwards. Yes, Landon Edwards. What a great uh, breakout performance for him as well. Yeah. So we cast, you know, Levin and we cast Taylor John Smith and Jim Perrick, but everyone else were local people who had never acted before, not even in theater. Oh. So you're going to meet tonight Kip Collins, who was bailing hay, and his sister dragged him out of the field and brought him to the auditions, and he got a, the role of Fig Carl. Um, and then there was Landon Edwards, who was nine years old and just an incredible young child who embodied Cecil and I knew from the middle from the middle of the audition when he was able to cry when I was asking him about memories I said what's your saddest memory he's like when my cousin left and couldn't hunt with me no more so it was it was incredible work with these people who had never acted it was kind of like docu combined with narrative you know feature storytelling because so many people had never acted and they were being themselves to some degree. And that is the most beautiful thing about independent film is you're giving these people a whole career opportunity to open up their whole life in the creative field, which is amazing. And let's talk about the film Independent Spirit Awards where I definitely envision this film going. Well, that How do you feel? You know, here's the thing. When we were making this movie and it was the 12 of us sitting in the woods with the ticks and like 96 degrees, we just wanted to make a film that maybe someday somebody would see at a film festival. And the fact is that it's been so well received and, you know, we've gotten such good reviews that now I started to think, oh my God, maybe it's possible to dream that dream. Even being here with you and being interviewed is such an incredible moment for us because yeah, because we came so far and it's, you know, as a filmmaker, it's not like when you're a painter or when you're a singer and you can just be alone and write your stuff. You need other people to come together and agree with you and that stalls a lot of people out. But I was driven by, I guess, a passion to tell a story that I thought was really important about 
about how we stigmatize children in the foster care system to no fault of their own and how you know these children need our help and I we told it through this metaphor and the setting of the Ozarks but I hope that people will see it and that it would be lovely to win awards we didn't make the film to win awards we made it for our mental health and clarity <laughs> I love that and let's speak about you have a few different elements I mean there's a love story there's the foster issue there's her having PSD, PS, PDSD, excuse me, from you know being fighting and, and uh, everything. There's so many different elements and yeah. how they play in and tie together. Yeah. Uh, what do you want mostly for the audience to get from watching this film? I really want people to understand their own xenophobia, their own fear of the other. <laughs> And I really want them to have empathy, whether it's for people who come back from the war and have PTSD, or it's people who are, you know, or children who are living without any support, you know, who are in foster care, bouncing between homes. I want people to foster children. You know, we just signed up and went through the process now to be on the list for Los Angeles foster care. And I just think it's, it's everyone who has a home, who has a heart, to open themselves up to. They should do this. And so I would love people to take away, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm standing on my high horse and I'm standing on a soapbox, but I really want people to, to care about children in the foster care system. And ultimately, I want people to be moved by the movie that I made and the story that we told. Rama, you are incredible. Congratulations on this Thank wonderful so premiere much. tonight. Thank you. Thank you.